We have with us uh, Kavita Lankesh, uh, sister of Gauri Lankesh, who has been battling bravely on the public and personal front for the last six months after Gauri's murder is killing. Kavita, thank you so much uh, for having this conversation at such a painful time. What have the last uh, six months been like? It's been uh, very troubling, very, very devastating because more than anything else, she was my friend, best friend, more than my sister. It's been very difficult and also as I've been telling, it's like earlier we were, people would confuse her with me and me with her. And now I'm supposed to be, made, apart from doing multiple roles with my own life, I'm going for Gauri's, <laughs> you know, functions and wherever they protest, some protest, some going. So many, many places they've been calling me. So it's very difficult and my identity has become just that now, more than a filmmaker or anything, it's just been Gauri like his sister. I'm proud of it, but at the same time, it's every time I go to these places, re you know, it evokes a lot of, uh, again, memories of her, the kind of respect she demanded, the kind of love people had for her. So it's been, again, it's, again it's become a very turmoil thing. You know? Then I slip back in my own life, I'm a little bit better there. But I can't, of course, escape being a responsible sister for her. All said and done, she stood and fought for many causes and I have to at least be there. This much I can do to support her, you know, to call her worthy a sister that way. You know, I think she always said that you were very, very close friends. So the uh, outpouring of support, grief, protest has been just amazing and very, very unique. What do you think is responsible for that? Of course, her work, her writing, the kind of human being she was. What has touched you most about this protest? All of it put together actually and it's somehow, see, I think the first time they were telling me any journalist has kind of this kind of protest that's happened or support for her causes throughout the country or even worldwide has happened. I mean, I didn't even realize how, well, how much she was worth when she was alive maybe in, in her causes because I always kept my life separate and everything. She would tell me, could come for some protest, but I would say my life is different, my child, my films, this, that, you know, and then now I realize the kind of work she's done and even people who don't, didn't know her, the kind of response people have she has evoked in them, you know. Like uh, the, the lawyer B.T. Vinkley was selling the other day in Chennai, there was just a guy on a wheelchair who would come to the protest and he kept his thing, I'm Gauri. So some kind of, uh, you, know, you can't explain that. So that kind of emotion she's uh, evoked in many, many people, people who didn't know her. See, also in that, she was not that famous a person in terms of her writing, Earlier she was writing English journalism, then she came to Karana, then activism in her own group and everything. But this has become a worldwide, at least international level phenomena that way. And I think there's a reason behind it because there's been a lot of angst amongst people about the whole Hindutva, the way they're fighting for it, and there's some kind of scares, fear, fears in, in journalists, for instance, there's a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. Cameramen are getting fear, fear, fearful to expose any news, and there's been so much silencing that's happening. So that kind of, I think the rallying behind Gauri because it's, that's what she, she was, she stood for, so. Kapita, uh, the investigation seems to be heading in a, some direction. Are you confident? I think so, because as far as I mean, as, uh, as I've been telling the media that, or people or in my own family that uh, they've been briefing me briefly about what exactly is happening. So I've always thought they were in the right path. Now, did this new, small, I would say small, it's not a big breakthrough as people are claiming or anything. According to me, I don't know what they is in it. It's a very small but positive step, I think. So hopefully this will lead on to more more detailed and in-depth than I am investigation and the finally not just the persons who were there or somebody who brought them on a bike. Those kind of things are important to crack the bigger issue. But uh, finally, not even just the gun puller. I think who's behind it should Absolutely, be the conspiracy. Yes. Yeah. Why so much <coughs> hatred, you know? And there was, as you know, already the whole theory was that the Bhagwan from Mysore was the next target. Mm -hmm. So it's like this and every I mean I also wonder like Gauri used to say, I don't want police protection. You need police protection. She needs what is police gonna protect all the rationalists, the logical people? How are they gonna be until any other crime which is really happening? You know, this is the dangerous uh, society we are living in, dangerous trend we are living in, I think. And it seems to be Increasing. So, uh, Kavita, tomorrow you're going to Gadak and tomorrow is also the sixth, uh, six month anniversary yeah. of the killing. So, is, uh, and you've been to Kerala many times. Yeah. So, there's been tremendous response in Kerala actually from the day one, I think. I think here, September 5th, the night itself, 12 o'clock in town, all there was a big protest and it continued throughout the day. And uh, apparently in Karnataka, some 120 Tanuks have had protests about her, about her killing. And in Kerala, I get a call every once or twice a week. 
I said, well, come on, I mean, I'm so difficult for me to attend all of it, but some I have gone. Gadag, they have been waiting for a long time and I didn't want to go there also again because it's too, so much traveling and I have my own work going on. But here, Gadag is like Kerala. They have supported Gauri throughout. Every every 5th of the month, I think 5th or 15th, they are holding a protest and they are giving you a free pen saying freedom of speech and all. That is wonderful. So I just wanted to go at least as solidar- solidarity and they are releasing a book about her. So I just want to show my solidarity to them. I was, I was joking actually, uh, since I'm not a great public speaker, they're still calling me so many times. If I was one, imagine how many times I would have been called, you know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I'm proud in this sense. All this grief on one hand, somehow when you go to these things, you're grief stricken again. But at the same time, there's a sense of, you know, sense of pride about Gauri. This is feel like, it's a, like well, so many times I see these young students, young people. Then this is what Gauri was speaking to, you know, addressing so many times. So I feel I'm happy I'm a part of that. And like as there's been, I'm Gauri, I see many Gauris in them. So I feel some kind of positive, you know, positive towards the whole thing. Yeah. When do you miss Gauri the most? Absolutely. I mean, when? when? <laughs> weekends, because she would spend all the time with us. And, uh, or nights sometimes, because we would put, uh, we had this crazy way of, uh, she used to open her laptop and I would sit on my desktop and we would converse and sometimes the conversation was interesting. Then we would start working on, you know, and start talking. And it's just happened many, many times and she's lived with me like sometimes when she's not well or, you know, or, or when I was not in town, she'd come and spend time with my daughter. So all these times I miss her terribly. And weekends, most times, at least some weekends, not all the weekends, she would come home and I would cook something for her and my daughter and we would have a wine each and she would crash out and say, wake me up at four and I would say, she's sleeping, so why wake her up, let her rest? You know? Then she'll get up at six and say, why didn't you wake me, I can't sleep the whole night and then she'll get up and sit and do her social media and writing everything till three in the morning. So these are the times I miss her most and I even when I go to office, it's an emptiness there now. So, yeah. <laughs> Is she scoping well? Kind of, but yeah, you know how children are, they kind of forget sometimes and when she'd come for this uh, January 29th, she cried the whole night. I don't know whether it was right to expose her, but it's important, she's very proud of Shaira she, she loves, she loves you, and you know, Kanaya she loves, it's very important. She comes and at least listens to some things because, and, but at the same time when she went back home, I think that whole atmosphere again, the aura of Gauri came to her, so she started crying and she said, I miss her, and she said, some more can we get her back? We'll send somebody else in next stage. So wish we could do that, but you know, it doesn't happen. And, uh, and she's not that young, but it's just a thought. You know, logically it might not happen, but at least could we somehow do it? Wish we could, but you know, there are millions of evil people, and I don't think my sister was evil any time. And she had no enemies that way. You know, it was just the ideological differences. She had no enmity at all, and she was so nice. Everywhere. I mean, she's nice even to her people who hated her. And uh, somebody told her that the day you uh, die, I'll give you celebrate, you know, distribute sweets and um, burnt patakis. She said, No, no, come before only, I'll only give you one. This is the kind of woman she was. So there's no sense of hatred with her. She hated, of course, the ideologies which people are bringing up forth now, but otherwise, so yeah. There are countless, countless number of times. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you, Tista.